welcome i welcome you all to this course samasa in paninian grammar and this is the first course on samasa we begin this lecture by recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड ऑन द तत्पुरुष समास we have said that tatpurusha samasa is the most productive amongst the four samasas in sanskrit namely avyayi bhava tatpurusha bahuvrihi and dvandva tatpurusha samasa also has got many subtypes in comparison with the other major subtypes and their varieties we also said that Panini has composed quite a few sutras in order to deal with the features of the Tatpurusha Samasa. Be it Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra or Samasa Anta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutra or Samasa Swara Vidhayaka Sutra, the sutras composed by Panini are quite a few in comparison with the other Samasas. Now, the formation of the tatpurusha samasa can be shown in the following brief manner we have two independent separate entities x and y and they are independent and separate in terms of the meaning as well as the word form and also accent but they are interrelated so the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge them together and get the output in the form of xy which is one unit so xy is one unit in terms of the meaning in terms of the word form and also in terms of the accent however as far as tatpurusha samasa is concerned this one unit xy has the head in y y assumes the head position in this particular one unit what it implies is that this xy is related to any other external word in the sentence only through y and x cannot be related to any other external world external word without going through y this is the implication of making y bold then we also studied some of the sub types of the tatpurusha samasa vibhakti tatpurusha karma dharaya ekadeshi samasa naya tatpurusha samasa gati tatpurusha samasa and now we are studying upapada tatpurusha samasa a very very productive sub type of tatpurusha samasa also profusely used to generate words indicating meanings by modern indian languages this is stated by the sutra 2219 upapadam ating upapadam ating there are two words in the sutra upapadam and ating both of them are in prathama upapadam is prathama ek vachana of upapada the word designated as upapada this designation happens by the sutra 3192 tatra upapadam saptami stham tatra referring to the dhatva dhikara 
stated by 3191, which governs the section up to the end of the third chapter. Now, because Upapadam is stated in Prathama Vibhakti, this becomes Upasarjana because of Prathama Niradishtam Samasa Upasarjanam. And then Upasarjanam Purvam ensures that there is a Purva Nipata so that Upapada appears in the first position of the Samasa. The second word is Ating. And what it means is which is not thing which means which is not a tinganta. The words continued are sup and sahasupa and then samartha padavidhi. But there is a question. So after having connected these meanings, we get the following meaning. Any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. This seems to be the meaning of the sutra, I repeat. Any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. So the question here arises, namely, what is the need of the word a thing in the sutra? In other words, what is achieved by this negation? Because if you say upapadam a thing, you intend to say that upapada of a particular kind is compounded. And this particular kind is not thing. Now, when you say a thing, where a is joined with thing semantically, we have already seen that in such a scenario, there is paryodasa semantically, which means that there is tadbhinna tatsadrusha as the meaning intended. And so if a thing is a paryodasa, then it would mean thing bhinna thing sadrusha. So thing bhinna thing sadrusha is only one namely sup. So a thing eventually would mean sup. But then do we need the word a thing to state the meaning sup over here? Because sup is already continued. So what is achieved by this negation? When we make not a thing and the, a condition for this sutra to apply, the only other available option through this negation is that of a subanta. And subanta is available to us anyways because of the continuation of the word sub and sahasupa. So now we are forced to think that in this sutra the basic condition of sub sahasupa does not apply. What it means is that sub one one applies but saha supa does not apply. Only sup and saha they apply. What it means is that the purvapada will contain su, but the uttarapada may not contain sup. Rather, the uttarapada might contain just the pratipadika, which is made up of dhatu plus krita. And so at the end, after we do the processing of the compound, we get Pratipadika plus zero plus dhatu plus krita as the compound output. Now this is captured in a maxim called Gatikarakopapadanam Kritbhisaha Samasabachanam Praksubutpattehe. This is a meta rule discovered by the tradition, and this rule says that the compounding of the Upapadas takes place with the other words before adding the final sub-suffix in the Uttarapada. That is, the final element of the compound will be compounded at the level of the Pratipadika only. This is the implication of the word a thing in this particular sutra. I repeat, the final bullet on the slide reads, 
that is that the final element of the compound will be compounded at the level of the pratipadika only this is the implication now the upapadas are stated primarily in the section 3 to 1 to 101 they are stated elsewhere also but in in this course we will focus on this particular section all these sutras are part of the upapada tatpurusha samasa stating section they will feed into the sutra upapadam ating the sutras prescribing the compound is mainly one but the sutras describing what is upapada are 101 primarily a very big section as compared to other compounds and even other types of tatpurusha compounds is devoted to this particular type highlighting the high productivity of this type of compounds the features of upapada tatpurusha samasa are the following namely utilization of verbal semantics the arguments of the verbs and the, those get compounded with the kridanta forms similarly existence of argument structure within a compound effective utilization of the semantic relations the karaka relations also high degree of productivity and therefore used in coining new terms for various scientific disciplines in india by the commission for scientific and technical terminology now let us study in detail the upapada saudnya however we won't be able to study all the 100 sutras we'll be focusing on some of them which denote which state some of the important pratyayas the first sutra is karmani an 321 this sutra consists of two padas karmani and an karmani is in 71 seventh case he stands for upapada so karmani means when karma is the upapada an is 1/1 referring to the suffix a now the other word present here is upapada through the sutra tatra upapadam saptami stham 3192 karma is the karaka and this word is mentioned in seventh case so the word at the end of which appears a case which expresses karma is the upapad that is the meaning of karmani the words continued are sup sah sah then samarthap padavidhi then dhatoh which means immediately after a verbal root and of course pratyayah 311 also kridating 3193 and also kartari krita which is 3467 and which says that the meaning of the suffix an is karta now karmani has got the word karman karma means object there are three types of karma stated in the paninian grammatical tradition with reference to this particular sutra nirvartya or vikarya and also third prapya nirvartya means yad asadeva utpadyate sadva janmana prakashate something which does not exist before but gets produced at a point in time that is what is nirvartya or what is gets manifest by birth something is already there but it becomes it comes to light because of the birth so we have kumbham karoti which means he or she makes a pot so now kumbhadikam hi avidyamanam eva utpadyate so kumbha was not there there was only clay and the potter brought together the clay and other instruments needed and then shaped the clay in a particular manner and the output was the pot the kumbh which was not there before so something which does not exist gets produced 
some scholar would say that kumbha exists within the clay and the kumbhakara's job is to just get it manifest even if this is accepted by this point of view as well this the karma kumbha over here will still be called nirvartya and kumbham karoti is then is an example of nirvartya karma vikarya karma is one which already exists but which gets modifications so this is different from nirvartya which already is but is manifest no here it already exists but it gets just some modifications for example kandam lunati so the meaning is he cuts the stalk the stalk exists but its form is modified cut into pieces yasya tu sata eva kashchid vikaro vidhiyate yasya tu sata eva kashchid vikaro vidhiyate its form is modified this is what is vikarya karma this modification is sometimes perceptible kashchit pratyaksha gramya like kastha kashthani bhasma karoti he makes the woods into an ashes he turns the woods into an ashes so kashthani bhasma karoti so kashthas were there earlier then some fire was put on them and then those kashthas become become ashes so there is modification of kashthas in the form of ashes similarly subarnam kundalam karoti he makes gold a ring so the gold metal is there and then it is given some shape and some ring is prepared out of it so now the point is that this is a modification of the cause the ring is nothing but a modification of the cause namely gold so subarna and kundala share that relationship of cause and effect where kundala is considered to be the vikarya karma sometimes the modifications are in accordance with the authority kashchit shastra gamya kashchit pratyaksha gamya kashchit shastra gamya for example brihin prokshati he sprinkles the rice with water now in brihin prokshati although brihin is dvitiya and prokshati contains the verb denoting the verbal action the vikara that has happened on vrihi because of this sprinkling is in accordance with the shastra so shastra has stated this particular vikara now vrihis are considered to be pure which earlier were not so there is modification in the form of vrihi which is stated by shastra so this is also termed as vikarya karma and finally we have prapya karma which means which is to be related or which is to be associated so this is a general relation with the action that is cognized and when the specific relation with reference to the action is not cognized kevalam kriya sambandha matram pratiyate general relation is understood kriya krita vishesha bhava pratiyate but the distinction that is brought about by the action is not understood so we have vedam adhite he recites the veda charcham parayati he clears the discussion in these two cases the action of studying or reciting and also clearing is related to veda as well as charcha in a more generic manner where there is kriya sambandha matra is understood and kriya krita vishesha abhava is there so the adhyayana kriya brings about no modification as far as the veda is concerned and also the charcha is concerned and so these two are called prapya karmas now let us take the example of the nirvartya karma and see how compound gets generated and see how compound gets generated so the meaning is he makes the pot 
कुंभम करोति इज द लौकिक विग्रह नाउ कुंभम करोति द स्पीकर इंटेंड्स टू ब्रिंग देम टुगेदर एज द कंपाउंड सो वी हैव कुंभ प्लस अम प्लस क्रु प्लस अर्ण सो देर इज समास संज्ञा बिकॉज ऑफ उपपदम अतिंग एंड सो देर इज प्रातिपदिक संज्ञा एंड सो सुपोधातु प्रातिपदिक यो अप्लाइज एंड डिलीट्स अम सो वी हैव कुंभ प्लस क्रु प्लस अण एंड देन न इज डिलीटेड बाय तस्य लोपा सो वी हैव कुंभ प्लस जीरो प्लस क्रु प्लस अ एंड देन बिकॉज ऑफ दिस अण मार्कर इन अण रु इन क्रु गेट्स द सब्स्टिट्यूट आर विच इज टेक्निकली टर्म्ड एज वृद्धि एंड सो वी हैव कुंभ प्लस जीरो प्लस कार प्लस अ एंड देन वी हैव कुंभ कार एज द फाइनली डिराइव्ड कंपाउंड आउटपुट कुंभ कार Similarly, one who makes a city is called नगर कार नगरम करोति Similarly, one who makes a painting is called चित्रकार नगरम करोति चित्रम करोति One who makes an idol is called मूर्तिकार One who makes a paper is called पत्रकार And you have so many words that are derived in this particular fashion. So many. कुंभ और पॉट एक्सेट्रा आर रिलेटेड टू द एक्शन ऑफ डूइंग एज ऑब्जेक्ट एंड दैट टू निर्वर्त्य कर्म द सफिक्स अण डिनोट्स कर्ता ऑफ द एक्शन ऑफ डूइंग हुज ऑब्जेक्ट इज पॉट एक्सेट्रा वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स टू बी रिमेंबर्ड ओवर हियर इज दैट कार इज अ बाउंड वर्ड विच मीन्स दैट कार इज ऑलवेज यूज together with something on the left hand side and never independently and alone so for example we cannot say one can handle one cannot allude to the same person and say that he is the car of kumbh this is not possible either you have to say kumbh karah ayam or ayam kumbham karoti you cannot say this is the kar of kumbh and that is why this particular kind of vigraha seems problematic now let us go to the vikarya karma one who cuts the stock so we have kandam lunati as the laukik vigraha and then we have kanda plus am plus lu plus an as the alaukik vigraha vakya now there is samasa saudnya over here so there is pratipadika saudnya then supodhatu pratipadika yoga applies deletes the am pratyaya and then an in an is deleted by tasya lopaha and then this deleted an as a marker brings about the substitution of au in lu so you have kanda plus 0 plus lav plus a and then finally first of all au and then av and so you have kanda lav as the finally derived compound output and this is the example of the vikarya karma similarly you can get the forms one who cuts the grass is the meaning and the compound generated is shara lav one who makes the wood into ashes is called bhasma kara and one who makes the gold into a ring is called kundala kar similarly when you have the prapya karma and you have the meaning one who recites to veda you have veda madhite as the laukik vigraha so veda plus am plus adhi plus e plus an and then sups are deleted so am is deleted so we have veda plus 0 plus adhi plus e plus z a uh, and then you get veda plus adhi plus i plus a uh, because of na uh, e becomes i and then h o y y a v a applies the sandhi rule and and because of that i is substituted by i a so you have veda plus adhi i a uh, and finally we get the compound output in the form of veda adhyaya this is an example of the prapya karma similarly one who clears the discussion 
is called charcha par same procedure is adopted and the finally derived compound output is charcha par the tradition has also seen that the the compound has not taken place in the following examples which is otherwise stated and available gramam gachati for example adityam pashyati or himavantam shrunoti in these cases at least there is no compound that is found observed to summarize the upapada tatpurusha samasa is one of the most productive types of compounds in sanskrit it is an exception to the by default derivation process of compounding it also involves the semantic relations with the action denoted by the verbal root the suffix in the compound denotes the sense of agent the compound thus generated can become a qualifier of anything for its qualification to be a, to a restricted domain special conditions will come into being in the sutras these are the texts referred to thank you very much